Good evening, Ian Davison, live weatherblogs.com, and your is here. Time for a look at the overnight outlook. First, start with the QPF. What we're going to expect for rainfall here. We have a lot of rain going to come up through the apps here. A big target in North Carolina. This is going to be a big flooding situation for North Carolina, Virginia, back here through Louisiana, up through central Pennsylvania. So, this is going to be a big issue over the next five days. We have to worry about the amount of water that the remnants of the leaves going to give us. Um, let's take a look at what the, the, it, looks, it looks like on radar. Here's the New Orleans radar. The lows located around this area. You have the tornado warnings outlined here in these feeder bands and a lot of moisture plume and I'll show that on the satellite coming up onto the storm. And as you look north and east, um, heavy rain will start right along the Appalachians um, and it become an issue for the next five, four to five days. And that could be heading right for the flooding. At least still tropical storm and expects to be that way for at least the next 12 hours before coming subtropical comes inland here towards Tennessee. What that's going to do is bring all the moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico, also in from the Atlantic, and combined to be a big issue to the east of the system too. You remember you're going to have still the low-level winds at different height, and especially when you get up against these mountains, the chance for isolated tornadoes will actually continue east of this low pressure center so they are from Virginia south right now it looks like they have some isolated tornadoes this week and then the wind and a heavy rain and a flooding rain is up against the mountains but the orographic lift makes it even funner because that will pull these storms and drench them even more so that's how the Blue Ridge Mountains may end up with the in the east side especially we end up with more water than the actual um, other parts of the storm Cadia still moves in and then takes a turn to the north. Hopefully this will continue on this heading and then turn out to the northeast as the trough kicks in. That would be nice. Does not see Cadia make any kind of a landfall impact on the United States. Look at the water vapor in, in motion. You can see Cadia is getting south together really well. Good outflow on Cadia. It was upper level low moving towards Bermuda, kicking out. And we have a trough digging and be trying to dig in here. Be on uh, high pressure digging in behind. Lee, and you can see there's Lee rotating. This is bringing all this golf moisture in. Then it'll start getting the fetch off the Atlantic Ocean, and that's what's going to cause so much rain along the Appalachians. So, this storm is going to be a very big nuisance and a flooding threat for the entire mid Atlantic, southeast coast, up through the parts of the northeast. As you see, when this thing finally starts moving, it, it'll move slowly. Taking a look at the GFS model, you can see Cadia here. And we also have Lee, and you see what happens here with the high building over it. The low will then crank up near Tennessee and the Carolinas. As Cadia tries to come in for a move towards the east coast, believe it or not, Lee is what knocks it out and away from the shoreline before it, this actually picks up on another system. By the end here, another system that picks up in the Caribbean going into the Gulf that could be an issue then for the Gulf of Mexico states again, which then would be another issue for the East and the Mid Atlantic states. Because any of these storms that come up here are usually caught up into the fronts or stalled fronts and cause big issues here, especially with inland flooding along the coastline. Severe weather threat will be anywhere from Louisiana now up through the Carolinas and eventually Virginia by Thursday. This whole area would be under an area that would be watching for the chance of isolated tornadoes from Lee and the remnants of Lee. Flood watches so far are up in the Galax and up to up to here, but I'm expecting them to be pushed forward. You see four and a half inches creeping into Bedford County. Um, six inches. This is I think gonna move north. And this is gonna be a big issue. That's heavy, heavy rainfall coming up here through Wednesday. That's not through Friday, because you add probably another two inches. So we're talking about five to seven in most of these areas here. So especially in the eastern side of the Blue Ridge mountain chain. So some serious issues coming up here for the Roanoke Valley. For the forecast, so the forecast for Roanoke Valley, 70 degrees tonight, chance of showers picking up. Heavy rain on Labor Day. Not a very nice Labor Day to go anywhere. Let's stay in your house. 76 degrees. Heavy rain all night Monday night. 63. Heavy rain on Tuesday. Rain, rain on Tuesday night. Rain on Wednesday. Rain on Wednesday night. With then 
tapering off rain Thursday into Friday, and it looks like we may actually get into a quiet period by the time we get into the September 10th, 11th, Saturday, Sunday time frame for any 9-11 ceremonies that may go on. You stay with LiveWeatherBlogs.com for all your latest weather information, and we'll keep you updated on this ever-changing situation. For LiveWeatherBlogs.com, meteorologist Dean Davison, have a great night, and we'll talk to you soon.